Hey everyone, and welcome to the Rush FM, a podcast where design and business meet in the same place. Weekly talks with industry experts on how they do it. Let's begin the show. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Yuris Fontaine. Hello, Yuris. Hello, Eugene. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Joris. I'm 31 years old. I live in Amsterdam together with my girlfriend, Diane. We uh, recently bought a house in Amsterdam East, which is uh, uh, kind of a big step, but it doesn't feel that, that big once you have done it. It feels like, yeah, you just go to a real estate agent and say, I like this house and let's, let's, go, let's go for it. I have a background in social psychology and currently I work for Crowbox as a Persuasion analyst. Persuasion analyst. Uh, what, what's that? What's that? How is that? What, what are you doing? Well, in in one sentence, I am I am responsible for showing the right message to the right people at the right moments, in order to make sure they convert or otherwise put that they go one step further in the online sales funnel until they purchase so a the product. Who, so you're the guy who decides if somebody's gonna buy it or not. Almost, no. Scientist. <laughs> scientist. <laughs> How is it working? Uh, I am the scientist that is interested in finding out uh, uh, what what principles work for people, uh, where, um, yeah, which principles they uh, are susceptible to, and I, uh, our machine learning algorithm finds out uh, which message should be shown to the uh, to the visitor at that moment in order to yeah, make them convert. Yeah. How did you get into this uh, the whole thing of social psychology and uh, persuasion? Well, social psychology, uh, funny thing is, just after graduating high school, I had no real clue what to do with with my life. Okay. My dad, he recommended me uh, becoming a doctor because it's it's a safe way. You have a lot of opportunities later on in the whole journey. But that wasn't really my journey. But I tried health sciences. I tried that for one year, even passed all my courses, but it wasn't really my, my path as well. But there was one course, psychology, that really stood stood out and I really liked that one. And, and then I had to make a choice whether I was gonna continue with health sciences or start over with the psychology program in Maastricht. And I ended up choosing the latter. So I studied psychology for uh, yeah three years, my bachelor. Then in the third year, we had the opportunity to go uh, and study abroad, and I chose to go to uh, university or to, to to go to California. And my uh, yeah, it was it was it was a fun experience. Um, so uh, University of California, I believe they have ten or eleven universities. Top of my mind. And um, I chose the three ones that were next to the beach. So University of California, Santa Cruz, San Diego, um, and Santa Barbara. Sunny, sunny yeah. beaches. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, it was winter time back then, but I got into uh, Santa Cruz, uh, studied there for six months. And uh, there was one course that really stood out for me that was uh, Social Influence by Anthony Pratkanis. And that really, I don't know, sparked something in me that I thought this is, uh, this is much more than I anticipated up front because I, I did already know that I didn't want to become a clinical psychologist uh, treating patients, but um, this course yeah, really showed me all the different experiments on what uh, motivates people to perform specific behavior. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you are standing on the, the, next to the street and there's one person looking up, nothing really happens, uh, uh, but if three people are looking up, nothing really happens. But if you see six or seven people looking up and all of a sudden there is something to see and that's well, social behavior going on. And then all of a sudden, number eight or number nine, they will also look up just to see what's going on there. And well, simple experiments like that really, well, uh, I really like reading about them and um, in my line of work, I'm practicing them uh, mm -hmm. in online and offline behavior. So you've written copy for a, a couple of known brands, right? For which companies did you write copy? I think the last company we signed uh, was Philips and IKEA. And I really love working for Under Armour as well. Yeah. So yeah, there, there are a lot of companies varying from the fashion industry to electronics. Uh, travel is one of the industries we really want to uh, start working in. 
Yeah, for example, booking, uh, like booking does a lot of things yeah, with persuasion. Does, <laughs> yeah, booking does a, does a lot of persuasion. I find it interesting. Every time I go to the website, they have a, I would call it an aggressive way of implementing their persuasion, but it is effective. Yeah. And I'm a sucker to it as well. Of course, you're like bombarded with 20 messages at once. Like two people just booked it. One room left. Uh, book yeah. it now. <laughs> The funny thing is, every time I, I uh, make a booking on book, Booking.com, I um, I feel the the urgency rising in my in my stomach. Like, oh, honey, uh, this this room <laughs> is almost sold out. And I'm a professional in this. I I from one end I like looking at it how they do it, yeah. and on the other other hand, I know I need to book a hotel. So I get uh, yeah, it, it works on me as well, and that's. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I don't know, is it something like in our human nature to respond to these kind of things? Because f sometimes, for example, I was on Airbnb, you know, and I knew I know about persuasion, how this kind of copy works. Mm -hmm. Like, and there was this message like uh, 20 people are watching in this room right now. Yeah. And the funny thing was I was really searching for a room and I needed a, new, a room at that yeah. time. And it somehow triggered my brain. I mean, like, oh, I have to really book it. Otherwise, yeah. somebody's going to take it for yeah. me. And it's really working. I, I don't know. Is it something we're wired to, or we can maybe resist it somehow? Yeah, I think the the principle you're referring to that the amount of people that are looking this uh, room right now is it's called social proof, mm -hmm. and basically I believe it it inherits from our yeah from our ancestors uh, back in the days. It was much more safe to live in a tribe or in a community if there is a lion approaching you and the group is moving into the right direction mm -hmm. and you are the only one moving into the left direction, you are either really smart or you are um, dinner for the lion. So yeah, th there is definitely some trigger that uh, leaving or, or living within the herd or uh, acting uh, the same behavior as the herd is uh, has its uh, evolutionary benefits. So it's something that is like from the back in the days and uh, it, that like it's really formed our brain of how we think and act and this kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the entire thing about persuasion principles. Yeah. What are they, how many are they, and so on. Yeah, like I mentioned, there was a course I, I followed uh, back at uh, UCSC, uh, the Social Influence course, and uh, the, the teacher uh, who was giving the course, he wrote a book, um, and in his book there were, I believe from the top of my mind, 144 influence tactics uh, that can be applied. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, I have to say that um, some copy, or some principles are I don't know, more or less comparable, but there are slight mm -hmm. deviations uh, within them, uh, and not all of them can be applied online. It has to do that a majority of them is is more interpersonal. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah numbers go up to 144. So what are the like, let's say, um, top seven, six or five most used or uh, seen um, uh, persuasion principles? Yeah. Uh, I think the most known principles are um, uh, from uh, a guy called uh, Robert Cialdini. Uh, he wrote a book uh, called the, the Six Weapons of Persuasion. Um, yeah, the majority of, of his tactics uh, we also see a lot online and uh, we also apply uh, in our machine learning algorithm. Social proof is the most known one, so it's basically stating what the majority of people like, do or, or want. So for instance, uh, like you said, uh, 20 people are looking at this room right now, or if you, you can also say five p people really want to book this so it's, it's basically you try to find some space around the, the tactic itself it's you should not use it every time in the same way because then you're a broken record at that moment mm -hmm. besides social proof i would say scarcity is the most known one scarcity can be applied in three forms uh, in amounts uh, for instance uh, only five products left mm -hmm. Uh, or in time, uh, this offer is temporary, don't wait too long. Oh, you all see all these uh, timers on the shops, like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, I don't know, the sale is going to be for seven more hours, buy fast. Yeah, yeah. They, they get me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a, a, a website, Font Exclusive, and whenever you put something in your cart, there is a timer ticking yeah. from 15 minutes to zero, and 
I don't know, I'm just searching to find another product <laughs> to, to get the best out of my, uh, uh, my shipping costs. So is it like they like delete everything from your cart in 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, they, they put it back. They put yeah. it back? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, I think if you combine social proof with scarcity, that's the, the most powerful combination. Uh, because then if you have the feeling that whenever you put, if you, if you compare it to an offline store, mm-hmm. whenever you have something in your cart and the, 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 the guy from the store tells you, no, you have to put it back in, in, in the store. And then 15 people are looking at the same product, you know it's going to be gone. So. Yeah. You, you, you're you probably going to go to the counter first, buy it, and then uh, continue shopping for other products. But isn't it something that, I don't know, sometimes it may decrease the trust of a buyer or something? I mean, you're trying to trick them into buying something? It depends. Uh, I believe there is some, some scrutiny right now on how scar- scarcity is being applied. Uh, people have the feeling that they are being fooled. Yeah. Well. Our system uses not only the messages, but also the, the triggers behind them or the business rules. So for instance, if I say um, uh, there are five products left, then our system is going to check with the database of our clients and make sure that there are five products left. Or if I say, well, there's a gray area where you can find, if, you, if I say few left, then few is a, it's a subjective. So yeah, you can. it can either be 10 or it can be 5 or it can be 2. So I, I like searching for the gray area, but for me it is important that the messages that I convey are credible because if I lose credibility, then uh, the visitor is going to lose uh, uh, trust in our system. And yeah. if the trust in our system is being lost... Yeah, so it's going to lose trust in buying lost. something. Yeah, yeah. it's going to trust it anymore. I understand. Um, what are other persuasion principles? that are like really used and you can see it nowadays, I don't know, outside on uh, adverti- different advertisements or websites and so on. Well, another known uh, tactic is called authority. It's basically making sure that the one that is conveying the message is a credible source. Um, so it should not necessarily be an authority itself, but it should be perceived as a credible source. And the most known example would be um, the toothbrush uh, commercial guy who is always wearing a white coat. Oh, okay, so he's like constantly a doctor and it's like, yeah, just buy this brand because it's like yeah. dentist recommended and so yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you wear glasses, you're seeing more uh, like more an intelligent guy and this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we can easily be fooled apparently with this stuff. Um, we use innovation as a tactic as well. So for instance, uh, you see them a lot online as well. Whenever a product is new, then it's labeled as new. Um, but also from back in the days, whenever we find a new source of berries, because we're uh, hunters and gatherers, and if we find a new source that is hardwired in our brain, uh, dopamine uh, will uh, fire uh, at our brain to make sure that we remember the location where we found that new source of, of, uh, of food. Um, so every time we see that something is new, it's, uh, it stands out more and it, it will uh, draw more attention compared to... Oh, that's really actually interesting because I recently discovered a shop and it's a new shop for me. It's recently launched like half a year ago. And what they do is like they sell really beautiful, it's called like that, beautiful items from Amazon. And everything looks so new in there. And for me, it's like, oh, man, I'm going to keep this place only for me. because. And I'm constantly coming there like on a weekly basis because they add new products. And I'm constantly searching for new products. And it's like, I don't know, I, I'm hooked on this website. I'm really hooked on it. And I constantly just come out and say, okay, let me just put it into my basket. I'm going to think about it in the future. Am I going to buy it or not? <laughs> so these things really works. <laughs> Yeah, you, you probably want to be on top of your game, having the yeah. first new yeah. gadgets that come out, the the iPhone 10, uh, all of a sudden, everyone wants it. Is it really better than the 9? Probably on, or, or the, than the, the, the 7? Uh, probably on, uh, to some extent. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's this principle of constantly being first, right? Of trying something or... Yeah, it's it's. I, I have the feeling that it has something to do with belonging. Uh, if you have the social proof element being part of the group, um, you want to belong. But at the other end, you also want to stand out within the group, yeah. but in a positive way. So it's status. I was just saying, hey, I have the new stuff. and uh... Exactly. So it's from a safe perspective, being the one that stands out and that can get you, uh, I don't know, more attention. So one of the 
things companies can apply it is like by producing uh, constantly new products, right? So people can buy, so they can feel like they have the new status, right? Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see it a lot on uh, cereal brands. All of a sudden, there is a new recipe, and yeah. it's just added an additional label. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, a more perfected recipe has been added. Well, okay, yeah. That- yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing with perfected recipe is so funny. I mean, <laughs> you see it a lot. <laughs> it's basically exactly the same product. Maybe yeah, yeah. they added <laughs> something new or a better package. Well, yeah. Actually, there was this case in England. They were selling cereals. <laughs> And the whole thing, the cereals were square. Yeah. And they just turned the cereals, like yeah. they created, um, how is the shape called? Um, yeah, a diamond. Yeah, yeah, they made it a diamond. Yeah. And like the sales boosted by 20%. Yeah. And I mean, it's the same cereal. They changed nothing, only the yeah. way it looks. It is, it is crazy. It's a great marketing stunt because, yeah, of course, yeah. it is exactly the same product. But yeah, by tilting uh, only the product for... for what is it? 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's perceived as a different it's, product. Yeah, and it's a new product. A, yeah, a new product. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, so we have innovation. What else do we have? We have something we call uh, the reasons why. So um, why should you buy this product? And it's basically telling or giving additional focus on the, 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 U, the product USPs. So if, if you're looking at a specific product or a, a mobile phone, if you go back to the iPhone 7, what was its main pillar for buying it? Well, it's waterproof or water resistant. I haven't tried it. Mm-hmm. Putting it in the water, i still afraid it will break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> But yeah, g- giving, giving the reasons why it might be a reason for people to uh, have a, a closer look at the product. Mm-hmm. Um, so aren't these like more or less like a features mm-hmm. of a product? Yeah. So, okay. So the features should be like the reason why you should yeah. use this certain yeah. Uh, yeah. product. So that's on a product level. You can also give it on a brand level. But is it also about the benefits it has? For example, the product, yeah. not only the, re- the features. Yeah. I would, yeah. I would focus on the, the benefits of the product then. So the, the, the real USBs. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going to say it's made from plastic, then it's yeah. okay. Well, that's, that's good to know. But... Yeah. Why is this a better product than its competitor? I, I once saw, an, uh, I believe it was a tag, it was made from real plastic. And that's, that's really funny because real plastic doesn't say anything else that it's made from plastic. But adding the word real to it <laughs> made it so much better. It's new actually. You know? yeah, you, you, you see it with real. leather. Uh, yeah. You have fake leather and real leather, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it makes sense. But for the plastic, you, have, you, you can't have a fake plastic. <laughs> just add the just add the word new, and it's like innovative already. <laughs> I understand. Okay, so um, what else? Or well, these are uh, all of them. So we have innovations. Yeah, there's a commitment, a consistency tactic. Yeah. Um, so basically, it, it it comes in a form if you. It's also called the, the foot in the door technique. So once you have a small request, so if I ask you, Eugene, maybe can, can I borrow you? Can I borrow a euro? Yeah. And then you're like, well, yours. You're a good guy, so <laughs> I, I will, I will, I will give you a euro. Okay. And then I don't know. One minute later, I'm gonna ask you, hey, you're, uh, Eugene, can I maybe borrow 100 euros? Okay. And then you're, ah, okay, um, yeah, probably okay as well. But if I started with asking you for 100 euros straight away. You would probably be more hesitant on yeah, in, in, yeah. in borrowing me. So it's like starting gradually from small up to big, getting up to big, I understand. Exactly. And uh, the commitment and consistency tactic behind that is that because you first agreed to um, yeah, acknowledging my request, which is uh, giving me the, the one euro, there is a, uh, yeah, uh, in back in your mind, you're, you're being told that you are someone that gives euros, me in this case, money. And you, you want to stay the same or you want to react in the same way as you did yeah. before. You don't yeah. want to contradict your own behavior. Yeah. So therefore, you're more likely to uh, mm-hmm. also... Uh, How companies uh, use this stuff? Of- well, you sometimes see it on, uh, uh, on, on websites uh, whenever they want you to uh, enlist for a specific uh, newsletter. They start with really easy questions uh, such as... Um, do you want to get updated on the the latest uh, uh, news of um, I don't know the economic uh, future mm-hmm. of the world? Yeah, of course. Now you click yes, and then all of a sudden, well, uh, leave your email address and we'll keep you posted. 
So it's it's basically you start with a really e- easy question and then it's a follow up with a more heavy question. Yeah, and then just buy our newspaper for one dollar, and then you buy that one, and then slowly yeah. they're selling you subscription for one yeah. year, and that's yeah. oh, yeah. oh, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, you can do it that way as well. That you start with, uh, you get people uh, have them get used to your product, and that uh, um, yeah, by paying the one one uh, euro for for the first paper, and then all of a sudden you have to pay fifteen euro for yeah. for yeah. the monthly <laughs> subscription. <laughs> And then you're stuck. <laughs> but does it apply also to, for example, um, people buying products from, let's say, from Apple? Uh, somebody, for example, buys, uh, I don't know, say, an iPhone. Is yeah. it going to inf- make them buy, for example, a MacBook and then maybe buy an iMac and more and more stuff from them? Mm-hmm. Or is it like not the same way? Well, there is a tactic called set completion, but I believe then you have to make it more clear for people that are that they are completing a set. Yeah. So, um, oh, so you have like an, an entire range of products exactly. and they have to buy all the products to complete the set. Oh, man, actually, this actually thing worked on me too because we bought um, a Sony TV mm-hmm. and then we thought, man, we need a couple of speakers. Yeah. And I was looking at different brands and I was like, no, I think we should go with Sony with a couple of Sony speakers. Yeah. And then they had this, the same TV with those speakers. And then maybe you need, I don't know, something, or maybe somebody wants a PlayStation and so on. And it's like the entire set comes along yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it fits, fits well with yeah. each other probably. So if I were Apple, then I would say, well, our newest member to the family, uh, see our, I don't know, the, the, the Apple Watch. And yeah, then all of a sudden. Yeah, that's why you, people, yeah, why you see people with the iPhones, Apple Watches, yeah. MacBooks yeah. and so on, like the entire set. Yeah. And I believe the other other side is also that you identify yourself with a brand, which yeah. is like the Walhalla for for all brands, that you want people to to see themselves as I don't know high status Apple product user. And then um, yeah, for me, I it took me some time to get a, a, an iPhone, but now I find it really difficult to move from an Apple product yeah. Yeah. to another uh, device is such as. Is the whole thing with commitment. Once you're committed to this thing, you yeah. can't just move it forward. Yeah. Although I am, yeah. although I am critic, yeah. Well, I I have some critique on the latest innovation and development yeah. of, <laughs> of 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 Apple, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why they say if a customer comes like the first time, you have a lower chance that he's gonna come second. But if he comes like three times, he's gonna is like you you want him forever, like for life. Yeah. Yeah, a loyal customer loyal is, customer, is, is, yeah. is, is, yeah. The th- it's much easier to keep than to yeah. acquire new ones. Yeah, yeah I agree, I agree on this one. Let's say that I recently launched an e-commerce store. Yeah. And it's a fashion store. I'm selling clothes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, my own fashion brand. Yeah. How can I apply these principles to the entire funnel of selling uh, my product? Well, I can uh, give you an example of how we would apply it or would approach it uh, as Crowbox being. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are different funnel steps. Uh, if you take the schematic overview of, a, of an uh, e-commerce platform, then you have a home page, you have a product overview page or a category page where you see a bunch of uh, t-shirts, then you have the detail page of the specific t-shirt in this case. Then you have the cards, you have the checkouts, and then Eventually, you have the thank you page thanking the customer for buying a product. And uh, we have different features that we apply there. Um, we, yeah, varying from really short messages uh, to longer messages uh, animating in and out uh, to messages that, that only appear uh, on specific behaviors such as exiting behavior. And basically, what we usually do is we, on the um, product category page, uh, we show um, yeah, notifications. And these notifications are yeah, somewhat longer messages. Uh, actually, it's more we show more the, the, the product tags, to be honest. Um, so the product tags, there are short messages that indicate a specific principle. Um, so it could be social proof. Um, and then you see a label on the product uh, image uh, indicating that uh, it's very popular or it could be scarcity indicating that there are few left or it could be authority uh, uh, indicating that it's the designer's pick. Uh, three principles being uh, applied on a really yeah, short, uh, yeah, limited amount of characters. And what they should be doing is decreasing the amount of choice overload. So if you have 
23,000 products, um, it's, it's for, the, for the visitor, it's rather hard to find the right products. Of course, the, the most e-commerce websites, they already use uh, filtering options, mm -hmm. uh, the most basic one being um, using categories. So we have all the T-shirts in the T-shirt category, we have all the jeans in the jeans category, yeah. but then you still have 100 plus different T-shirts. So how are you gonna find the one that really fits your description? Yeah. And of course you can use aesthetics, uh, but you still have to scroll a lot of different yeah, yeah, images yeah, or yeah. products. So what, what we then do is we show the tags as to yeah, make it easier for people to make an informed decision mm -hmm. and then the system finds out which principle works best for you as a, as a visitor to click on a specific product. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, we have an image where it says very popular, you click on the product yeah. and then all of a sudden you land on the detail page. Yeah. You have some more information out about the product, you can see it more up close. Then we uh, show a um, so-called uh, persuasive notification uh, and this notification is somewhat longer. Mm -hmm. uh, it animates it. So if you can give an example of what it can potentially say. Can potentially say a scarcity message uh, indicating that this product is almost sold out yeah, and then <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, basically my my job is to find a balance between figuring out how much i want to push uh, because it's it's a, a balance between informing and really steering someone into a specific direction i'm personally i'm more f fan of informing uh, the, the shopper so just by adding the last sentence don't wait too long you are steering more towards buying a specific product but if i just say this product is almost sold out then i'm informing the user about the information that they uh, would probably not have seen otherwise but it could also be a social proof message indicating that this is the the most bought product of the week or it could be an authoritative message uh, that it's one of uh, the designers favorites uh, in the category of t-shirts or it could be a uh, discount that, that you say uh, this uh, uh, product is currently uh, lowered in price. So there, there are a lot of different options and the main goal of that specific experiment or of the, the persuasion notification would be that people are more likely to add the product to their uh, basket. Mm -hmm. um, let's say it's a successful message, people are more interested, and they uh, add the product to the basket, you, co you get into the, the, the basket area. And then um, we could uh, see that you have, I don't know, uh, let's say 15 euros left until you get free uh, shipping. Mm -hmm. So then I would try to motivate the users to add more to the basket. Just by it's upsell, upsell. Yeah. yeah, just by saying it's, it's, it's giving the same information that they can find everywhere on the website. Mm -hmm. Free shipping starting uh, 50 euros, but if they have 35 euros in their basket, I'm just going to say, well, if you buy for 15 euros more, then you will save five euro ninety five on your uh, we will pay you the shipping costs so you can actually put a couple of let's say accessories in the basket and just show them hey just buy one of these accessories and it get like free yeah. shipping yeah or I just uh, you give them a, a, I can make it easier for them because uh, there is a, a, a really easy model on on changing behavior it's uh, uh, created by uh, BJ Falk he is mm -hmm. a, a teacher from uh, uh, from Stanford University mm -hmm. and he uh, made the behavior model and uh, basically there are two axes so you have the ability axis and you have the motivation axis and basically you want to find a sweet spot where people are people that are not motivated enough you want to motivate them more or you want to make it easier for them mm -hmm. and so for instance if, if you sh show uh, on the uh, card level uh, that for 15 euros more they, they have free shipping and I give them a link to the sales items like hey click here to see all the, our sales, uh, sales items then I make it easier for them yeah. so I'm increasing the ability for them to mm -hmm. to find the, the, the relative it's, products. It's really, it's, it's really interesting what you mentioned because in the end it's about making the entire process easy and yeah. smooth for them of buying something yeah okay but one question that pops in my mind is let's say I see this green t-shirt, right? And I yeah. see this thing of label, very popular, I click on it and yeah. so on, I see the messages and so on. But do they really influence me buying the t-shirt if I don't really like green t-shirts? Well, you might not like the color green, but it, w it will spark your attention because what, yeah. what is making this product so, so popular? popular? Yeah. So you will get, there, there might be some curiosity for you there. And otherwise you, so my goal is to make you click on, at that moment on that uh, t-shirt mm -hmm. uh, but yeah you will be more likely to to click on the product and for that experiment it's a win 
if you yeah. decide not buying the product, well, that's of course your decision. I cannot yeah. make you buy something that you do do not want yeah. to have. That's true. So let's say um, I added the items in the cart, right? Yeah. I have the full cart and I just want to buy. Do you add something to the checkout process too or not? Well, let's say you you have added additional uh, products to the cart and then all of a sudden you think, well, maybe maybe it's not the right moment to purchase something. I'm going to wait for a special discount. And then all of a sudden you make the exiting behavior. So uh, how that works on a desktop device, you go with your, your mouse, uh, your, your, your cursor to the either top right or top left part of the browser, which we uh, um, yeah, uh, see as exiting behavior. And then all of a sudden uh, a message will uh, will appear indicating that you're almost there you only only one step away from uh, buying buying this product and receiving it tomorrow so i'm trying to give the the, the shopper the feeling that the product is almost in their hands they can all, almost feel it because it's so close of being their own so i'm giving them the feeling that it's yeah it's called an endowment effect so yeah there are different ways of of trying to make them go to the next step the, the easier way is giving them discount, but it's it's for me it's a little bit of a a, a cheap yeah. trick. I, th I think it's a bit yeah it's a bit cheesy it's, as well. It's like, free money. So yeah, it's like I hope to do it. I, I may do it by accident, move the cursor. You know, it's like you give me discount for nothing. <laughs> well, if if I would see that I get discount by exiting behavior, I would try it uh, every <laughs> single time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that, that would definitely work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, that that would definitely work. <laughs> I mean, that actually can be a really good delighting moment in the checkout process. Hey, uh, get a 10% discount on this item yeah. right here. Just enter the coupon. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Um, what about the microcopy? Do you use any microcopy in the in the process uh, of rather than just showing like labels and so on? Uh, how do you use like overall the copy to yeah. influence it? Yeah, what I usually do is uh, just conveying uh, addition, yeah, the, the same message that is al already available on the website. So, for instance, um, if if they get free shipping starting 50 euros, then I would show that uh, on, on a location in, in near the, the, the call to action button as well. Um, but I, yeah, what what you what usually is static on the majority of websites, I want to make it more dynamic. So if there are uh, if they have reached the threshold of let's say 50 euros so they have more than 50 euros in their basket then i want to show you have free shipping right now instead of showing you have free shipping starting 50 euros okay so you show them like hey you achieved the free shipping you exactly. received it exactly because why why have them make the, the 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 mental calculation if they have reached the 50 euros so that's also again the, the ability axis you want to make it as easy as possible for the for the visitor at that moment and let's say some companies have this thing of uh, recycle your clothes, for example, bring them back and just recycle them. These kinds of benefits, do you also use them, uh, let's say, um, during this uh, buying uh, funnel? Yeah, I, I would say every, th every, every single point of information that, that will make you stand out from the competition is uh, every USB, brand USB, you should. Is there like any specific point where you, uh, on the website where you should use it? Or it's just about finding uh, the right spot where visitors read the most, or how is it going to work? Well, if if it concerns uh, um, on on the really the brand level, I would say give it on the the, the home uh, when you, when you enter the website. But the deeper you go into the uh, the, the sales funnel, the probably the less relevant it will become. Yeah, so because you're already aware of this yeah. part. Yeah. So first, I would say that the awareness should be: Is this the right website for me? Am I gonna find products that interest me? The second step would probably be: Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find something. Then you should be more motivated to click on a specific product and find out if 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 there is a match. Mm -hmm. If you find a product that is uh, that you like, then it's more about uh, so how about shipping uh, is it going to cost me additional money um, is it going to be the 100 euros that ikea sometimes charge or is it going to be free after let's say 20 euros or maybe that's well and then um, when will i receive the item that's very important especially when you're further down the what about the returns the returns too right if i can return an item and so on if if it's free returns i would say that's a big plus because yeah. then um, the the risk of buying a specific product is far less 
So I would emphasize that as well. Yes, yeah, so it gives you like security yeah. of okay, I can yeah. return the item anytime and this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's there. The, there is no real w risk besides it might take you, I know, a little bit of effort of returning it and bringing it to the postal office. But otherwise, yeah, it's just like buying a product in 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 stores. So, mm -hmm. and you you want to make it feel as easy as possible. Hey, hey, we even included a return form. If you're not 100% satisfied about this product, just just send it back and we'll give you all your money back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand. So it's about pushing these benefits of what your company can offer. I yeah. understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay, the copy, the process of writing copy. Yeah. How do you write copy? How do you know which one is going to work for this certain action and so on? Yeah. Yeah, it's, What's it's the process? It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have the gift for that, right? <laughs> yeah. So what I do is first figure out what's the desired behavior. Um, so first I want to figure out what what do I want the visitor to do at that moment. Uh, so if it's on a, a product category page, uh, the desired behavior for the for the visitor would be click on a, a product that you like. On a product detail page, uh, the desired behavior is it could could be multiple things, but most likely it would be uh, add the product to your cart. But it could also be um, add this product to your favorites list because maybe some marketing insights indicate that uh, um, I don't know 60% uh, of all uh, uh, products that have been added to your favorite list or your wish list uh, will be purchased eventually. And if you look at the balance of how heavy. Uh, specific behavior is I would say adding it to your basket indicates yes I am really motivated to buy this product but adding it to your wish list it's it's less heavy as yeah. to see as yeah. to say how do you test the copy actually if something works or not how do you do for example you're changing a copy to a button right how do you AB test it how do you do it yeah so we we, we use a machine learning algorithm for this um, so my job is to f to figure out different um, variants of the same uh, uh, preservation principle. So I believe for the product tags, which are the small labels that we uh, place on uh, uh, the product category page, uh, we have about four different variants per principle, and usually we use about six principles. Okay, so you tested on the same product. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not on the same. We we indicate the the rules which products are eligible for a specific uh, uh, copy variant, but the system eventually decides whether or not it's going to be presented on this uh, product or on another one. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to come back to the, the trustworthiness, if a product is not almost sold out, it will not be able to, to reach, uh, to receive yeah. the, the label uh, almost sold out mm -hmm. because we, yeah, we have a first look at the, the stock levels. Uh, uh, but um, if it's a popular product, then it's a business rule that's behind this. For instance, if it's part of the top 20% most purchased products within a specific period, let's say seven days, then it's eligible for the, the label, very popular. Um, and so to come back to your question, when will we, uh, how will we de determine if a specific copy variant is, is successful? Well, I will get back a, a performance report indicating that uh, these copy variants have performed this well on uh, the, the conversion uplift, but then uh, on the uh, micro conversion. So mm -hmm. where um, a lot of uh, companies look at the end conversion, I'm yeah. solely interested in, well, I'm mostly inter interested in micro conversions yeah. Yeah. because my uh, copy variant or product tag uh, message uh, only has impact at that moment yeah. on the micro conversion at hand, which is clicking on a specific yeah. product. But let's say, for example, you're testing and maybe testing like a copy on an add to basket uh, yeah. button, right? Yeah. For example, one copy is going to be, uh, I don't know, let's say 50% uh, CTR, right? Uh, no, let's call it 60%. And the other one is 40%. Yeah. And eventually, logically, you would go with the, the one that works like for 60%. Mm -hmm. But what about the 40%? Because it's still working. Yeah. H how do you do it further? What do you do further with that copy? Can maybe test if it's more if it works better for specific segments. So what what uh, the results might be on the overall level. So the entire target population, it might differ between specific groups. So maybe for Facebook visitors visiting your website, uh, they might respond really well to a, 
uh, to copy variant A versus copy variant B. Mm -hmm. So you can deep dive. So you just put it on different channels. Let's say somebody comes from LinkedIn, they will be more interested in something more like corporate language. Okay. Somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the, main, the main rule they use for, for copy, uh, for, for button texts, is that it should not be too hard. So for instance, on a product detail page, if you use a copy such as buy now, mm -hmm. then it's okay, well, what happens? So there are always questions in the back of your mind. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they're conscious, but usually they're unconscious. Yeah. So if, if you see the, the line of, of, of copy that says buy now, is it if I click on this, will it instantly be, I don't know, um, uh, paid from my, uh, uh, from my bank account? Mm -hmm. Or are there maybe some steps uh, uh, involved in between? Well, of course, if you're uh, used to shopping online, you know that there are some, some steps in between. Yeah. But if you're not so comfortable with purchasing products online, then you might think, well, uh, this is too, I don't know, dangerous or uh, yeah, for you to, to, to click on that button. And you might refrain from that just because it's a so-called hard call to action. So you might want to go for select your size first or at least a little getting back at the commitment and consistency yeah. uh, message you first want to pique their interest and then make sure that they click on the product itself and then they yeah add to basket which is uh, less heavy uh, compared to buy this product i understand i understand i understand i understand um nowadays you see a lot of tech companies yep. launching somebody's launching an app somebody launching in a web app and so on mm -hmm. and eventually everybody needs a website yep. for selling their yep. product or uh, their software solution as a service and so on yep. how can somebody apply this principle to their website let's say i'm a software company i have this really good uh, say cleaning app that allows you to book easily a cleaner that can come and just clean your house at respective time, right? Yeah. How can they, for example, use their new product on the market? Yeah. Nobody knows about them, so they're trying to get some um, uh, some users and some yeah. uh, new clients. They're using different channels. For example, they're using Facebook for promoting, Google AdSense, and so on. How can they use these principles to boost the credibility of somebody using the app? You know, because it's a little bit, for example, it's risky, for example, to hire someone and just come to your house and do the cleaning, for yeah. example, right? So how can these principles help to increase the credibility of using a product or a service? So what would be the main desired behavior on that website? So they can download, uh, for example, the app and start using it and just start booking uh, for somebody to yeah. come and uh, just yeah. Yeah, use the service and so on. And would you expect that people visit it on a desktop device or more on a mobile device? Uh, more mobile device. Yeah, more. nowadays mobile is really increasing fast yeah. and yeah, yeah, mobile. So then you're dealing with a smaller screen. Yeah. So you should take that into account. Uh, I think the first, you probably read something on it somewhere, uh, maybe a, a blog article. But let's say you uh, by accident stumble upon a website. Okay. You're, you're neutral. You have no idea what it is. Mm -hmm. So then the, the, the five second rule will kick in. Uh, five seconds. Yeah, so you, you land on a website and then you want to make sure, am I at the right place right now? Okay, so I have to convince the person in, in a five second bracket that he's at the right place. Yeah, so what first as, as the designer of the website, you want to def define for yourself um, what, can the, what can my visitors do on this website, what, what I'm offering them, and then you want to translate that in a beneficial way for the, for the visitor. So uh, find the best, uh, best trustworthy uh, cleaners um, mm -hmm. with no risk whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep it short, keep it, but make sure that it tells the, enough to be uh, mm -hmm. understood. And exactly. if you can incorporate some USBs uh, compared to the, the, the competition in there, that'd be great, of course. Okay, so because I see a lot of companies, for example, we work with a couple of uh, clients here and there, and everybody wants to use long copy. I mean, they're really about telling the entire story of the brand, right? Mm -hmm. So if they, for example, have a really good feature, they tell the entire story about how they did come up with that feature, how it works, and so on. Is it something like that really you need to deep dive into this as much text when somebody's just coming first time on your website, or you should keep it like really um, short and straight to the point? Uh, I would say it depends on your target audience, but I, I would say the, ma the majority of people aren't that interested in you as a company. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> the harsh truth. <laughs> uh, yeah, the people, pe yeah, companies should acknowledge that and, and make sure that they can grasp their attention just for a little bit uh, at, at first sight. And don't be, don't use long copy uh, straight away. Just just grab their attention and then make sure there's additional information. Are you interested? Click here. Oh, okay, so you, as you say, you grab their attention with short copy. And once they want more details, they can just, okay, learn more, click, click the button, learn more, and you can just go. And then it just automatically scrolls down and you, yeah. you can get a, I don't know, a chapter how it works. Yeah. Maybe before that you can uh, give some, uh, use some authority indicating, well, it has been featured in the New York Times. It has been featured in, I don't know, some, some prestigious media, uh, yeah. um, rated best app uh, by Wired or yeah. whatever. Showing some reviews from people that are using it. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, if you use uh, social proof and then the reviews part, make sure that they are trust. Well, there it, it it feels that they are real users. Yeah. If uh, you use stock images or images of perfect people, that yeah, that's that's know. oh man, and I see those really good like thirty two yeah. smile. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes me okay. I want to get out of this website. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny because uh, there is this I don't know girl and uh, you see her a lot for so many companies see she's a, a model for stock photography yeah. uh, i believe she's yeah uh, euro asian okay. type looking girl and she well she looks she looks good but it's it's kind of funny to see her being used <laughs> for so <laughs> many so many different platforms but yeah i would say make if if you're using reviews make it trustworthy and um, yeah. use either no photograph or ask people to upload their their real uh, picture yeah. maybe together with one of their leaning uh, uh, yeah. helps making it even more trustworthy because it's not about you it's about also the fact that yeah. they're they're getting uh, help in, in cleaning so what you say it's about being really transparent yeah. with the visitor that comes yeah. over just tell the truth yeah. and here is how it is mm -hmm. yeah. If I look at myself when, when uh, shopping for a, a, a specific hotel or a specific product review, I'm not, in, not that interested in reading that it's a five-star product. Yeah. I know it's a five-star product, otherwise I wouldn't be searching for it. But I'm looking for the one-star ex uh, experiences. I want to make sure, I want to debunk the fact that it's a shitty product. I saw even myself on Amazon sometimes. I was like, okay, it has lots of good reviews, but where are the shit reviews? I yeah. need to see what's yeah. the bad stuff about this yeah. product. Yeah, and if they had some shitty experience with the brand itself, like, okay, well, that's probably one in so, uh, so many experiences, so I, I can make the, 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 the investment right now. You know, because people sometimes try to hide this whole thing of bad reviews of their products mainly, and yeah. they're like, sometimes they're just afraid to delete them and so on, yeah. because they think they're going to kill the trustworthiness of the company. Yeah. Do you think it's a good thing to keep those bad reviews of a company? I, w I would say you, you, you can moderate it, um, but just make sure that there's no like real swearing or just make yeah, sure yeah, that it's... Course, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. But, uh, because does it add to the trustworthiness of the product and so on if you people see, let's say, a bad review? Yeah, well, it's, I, I believe it's, uh, it's normal to have bad reviews. Yeah. Um, it's, it's normal in life. People like you and people don't like you. People like products and uh, another side of the country doesn't like your, your product. So yeah, welcome to, re to real life. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, don't, don't paint a picture of uh, uh, that's only been told in fairy tales because yeah, um, reviews are being used so, man so much uh, in, in, in the, the e-commerce uh, industry. Yeah. People are used to seeing uh, bad reviews, and and it's not that it's instantly a deal breaker. Yeah, even sometimes I get noticed we got so wired into this whole review system that sometimes when you see a website without reviews, you simply just don't trust it. I mean, it looks I don't yeah. know, like I don't know, are you like a ghost shop or something? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe one, maybe one addition to it, you can also use social proof in this case, uh, because you're talking about people that are downloading your app. You want to um, see maybe how many times it has been downloaded. So it's a different form of social proof. Mm -hmm. And it also relates directly to the, uh, to the desired behavior is uh, download our app and try it yourself. And maybe you pique some interest, make, make, make them curious. Um, um, 
maybe state something that, uh, well, especially our, our third feature is what people love the most about our app. And then yeah. they have to find out them themselves in, instead okay, of... Okay, so you can say this is our most loved feature now. Yeah. And people really love it and they enjoy it. People go crazy on uh, on websites uh, such as uh, Board Panda or, or yeah, up yeah. Upvoted. <laughs> okay. If they're like, oh, 11 things that really uh, got me crazy. And I love number six. You should see that one. Yeah, well, it's curiosity, and that's yeah, it's you, yeah, it's normal that people are, yeah. yeah, and that's the desired behavior at hand right now. You want to make people yeah click on or download the app, and then you're one step further, and then you have to figure out okay, once they downloaded it, you want to probably want to make the onboarding cycle as as quickly as possible. Don't ask them for stupid things as as phone numbers straight away. Just make sure that they onboard, yeah. that they have an account, and that you can contact them on their email address. That's yeah. a big win. And then continue with the onboarding process, maybe on uh, using the email, and so it's it's baby steps. What about the call to actions? Yeah. How to use them in a better way? So like people, uh, is there like I don't know a certain rule? I mean, you have to have a call to action on top, then you have a call to action on bottom. Uh, it should be like really visible, or what's like the main rule of call to actions? I think that the only main rule is that don't use hard call to actions. So uh, buy now would be really hard. Yeah. Or uh, if you say choose color. But if I say, for example, download now, it, it's a hard one, right? If yeah. I say download now. Yeah. yeah. Well, download now would be something that you will not show straight away, or you should give an additional call to action next to it. Um, I would say read more about this product or about our services yeah. as the main call to action and then a secondary call to action next to it or download straight away. Okay. So you give them more more freedom, more autonomy. Okay, so it's not like you're imposing something on them. Yeah, you're not going to make an informed decision just by reading uh, one sentence. Yeah. You're not going to yeah. download it straight away. That's stupid. Yeah. So just 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 think from the the, the user's per perspective and then um, try to help them and I think that's the the, the, the biggest shift uh, companies need to make. You, you want to help them and yeah, give them the best informed decision to make and uh, you don't want to trick them into downloading an app because they will delete yeah. it straight away and then you're yeah back to square one yeah 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 i agree with that one but what about the frequency of the call to action should it be because i swear i saw this website once and they had a call to action at every usb so there was this feature they had to the download the app button then they had next feature they had to the download the app button i was like well, how many download the app buttons do you have in here? <laughs> so I, I suppose, I mean, you don't sh shouldn't have like so many download buttons on the website, but what's like the rule? Should it be like constantly visible or should you should have it constantly in one place or how it should be? Well, if you look at the, the, the behavioral model, then you would uh, try to, mo you have the motivational axis and the ability axis and to make it as easy as possible, you want to have a visible uh, call to action uh, for the most desired behavior. If that is uh, subscribe to a newsletter, then that should be the call to action that's visible. You can make a sticky bar on top of it or on the bottom, usually on top probably. Uh, you could also do it the way you described that on every single block yeah, well, you can you can download it. But probably yeah, if if it backfires because you get agitated by it or yeah. well, your motivation to click on that button, the, the ability is really high, but your motivation is dropping. Yeah. So then you better make sure that it's a it's a hell of a product. <laughs> So I would say, yeah, don't 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 make an overkill on, on using call to actions. Um, yeah, make sure that uh, it's it's in line with the desired behavior. So don't go throwing five different call to actions uh, to to a user. Be consistent. Use the same line of copy for for each. Uh, don't don't yeah confuse the users, because if you say it uh, on one uh, in, in one. Yeah, if you change the way of, of saying it, it yeah, it might look like it's a different call to action, but yeah, you, you may you, you probably more confuse the, the, the visitor instead of help them. Coming to an end now of our podcast. So let's say somebody wants to really get into the whole persuasion field. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend them to do? Like what books to read, maybe listen to podcasts, interviews, or maybe um, I don't know, Google a couple of courses you pass and really recommend to do? Well, a book what the majority of uh, marketeers read on, on this topic, it's, uh, um, it's by Robert Cialdini, mm -hmm. uh, Influence. Uh, it describes the six weapons of, uh, of, of, of influence. Um, I think that's a good starting point. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's, it's, yeah. it's like a basic. 
It's a basic, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a, another book that I would really recommend. It's uh, called Hidden Persuasion. Hidden Persuasion. I think it describes 31 or 33 different behavioral tactics uh, and how they are applied in advertising. Um, it's, yeah, it's n really nicely uh, designed as well, uh, I believe by a design company here in Amsterdam. Andrews Dagen, I believe, but um, not affiliated, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th those are great those starting are points. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joris. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs>